Niaka and Coffa and Mofranto of you will be a Benyanidi Ew. Na and then you re Yan come to change ye yes, you almost say ye check a car and son a yeba. Na any money doors on Sminana, ye ye. Ye babble what they say next time, no, ye ain't just a bew. And to Sam Reno, Mamma Cassana ain't yet in tenor, and then come to Chino, a fa ye may bruno youth no, and won't ask them any ye babbeca. Na and there, yes, right, yes, it's no more. If I can see another social media, and so you to know, and I was so. Say, ye fa a free team, men from the from fourteen. A qua cock would see twenty eight semins ra. A very active or social media. And to near me, a person you know, air affect it in you know, some way, somehow. Unia, a woho, Oba, a woho, a Oba, maybe in Copper had twenty more in an hour. And to know what twenty eight in the bar, a war ten already. And to know, young come to train you in a gina morality. Now, a war youth, no, you youth, na you were your papa could damn Mr. Connedu. We named the four or one Yamiaman in India or Timidy Etro, Eddie Bibia. And to know Sam Reno, my call your papa so now everybody a rich person or a couple of ones in Mr. Ramon. I am not a moment's spam, make a crack, make a chin, so Eddie Afra from Gaga. And see, Mr. Connedu, your mama quab ever eighty two V studios. Thank you very much. Um, we really appreciate you coming over and for you to just give us the time. God bless you, Thank first you. of all, to Thank speak you. of. Second of all, could you tell us a bit about yourself? Like, I just want our audience to just know who you are, to just know you're not just an aged man, but you know, someone with the wisdom that we can feed off. Absolutely. Uh, so my background is accounting. I studied chartered accounting in the UK. Um, I am an author, mm -hmm. an author of philosophy. Yeah. So I have published one book entitled The Twelve Stars of Wisdom. The Twelve Stars of Wisdom. The Twelve Stars of Wisdom. Mm -hmm. And in that book, my focus is to teach the youth, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the meaning of wisdom and what they can do to improve their lives. And one aspect of the material is morality. So today I want to talk about morality, but in future we we'll have more talk topics. About the other dimensions of wisdom. Wisdom. Okay. Thank you. And for tonight's show, we have words of wisdom for the youth. So if you are youth and you are watching, you are listening, please stay tuned. Just make sure you don't turn to any other page. Because we have something right for you, made for you, tailored for you. And if you pay attention to it, trust me, your life is going to be better. I, I can trust you. Like, you can trust me on that. So to go on to morality, I can, okay, not to just get in front of you, but I, would you mind telling us where you were born? I can say you grew up in Ghana at some point. Yes, I was born in Ghana. Okay. Uh, in the Ashanti region. Okay. And I grew up in Ghana. I came to the United States when okay. I was in my 40s. Okay. Uh, I've been here for almost 20 years. Okay. So I've experienced both worlds. Yes. You know, so. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. So, no one growing up in Ghana and living in the diaspora for about two decades, that's cultural conflict and other things in play. So. When it comes to morality, in your own words, could you define for us what morality is? The standard definition of morality is a system of values mm -hmm. that determines what is right and what is wrong. Yes. Uh, but beyond that, uh, we have other systems like laws. Okay. You know, laws of the land. That what is lawful is right. What is unlawful is not, not right. right. Okay. Uh, we have ethics, like business ethics, mm -hmm. where a business tries to define this, the set of behaviors that are acceptable in the work environment. Right. You know, those are targeted towards business objectives. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about morality, I think it should be distinguished from ethics and from laws. Laws. Okay. 
because morality is usually connected with spirituality. Okay. Oh, I like that part. I like that ending part. It's connected to spirituality. So then it takes that to religion I'm sorry. somehow. Somehow. So what your mind tells you if you grew up in a certain religion has something to do with your morals. Absolutely. Okay. So if you know stealing is bad. So morally, it's wrong. Yes. Okay. So with the both cultures, growing up in Ghana and living in the United States, how do you see these kids of our age, like, I mean, the younger ones growing up, how do they, with their morals, and that's of how you experience whilst growing up, could you tell us the difference? Yes. I think the main difference is that in Ghana, uh, growing up, we're not used, we're not exposed to much information, mm -hmm. like the kids are exposed to here. Okay. Over there, you learn from your parents, yes. and then from maybe your the friends, community. you know, in mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. So we grew up knowing morality as something to do with religion only. But okay. in this environment, the kids are exposed to the whole world. Yes. They are exposed to a whole system of cultures around yes. the world. Mm -hmm. And they, they go on the internet, gather information, mm -hmm. and try to define their own set of values. So I think they are in a more complex situation than we, we were growing up in Africa. Okay. So you think, based on what you just answered, should we blame them much for certain decisions they take morally with the cultural differences? Yeah, I, I think that it comes to the question of whether or not we have absolute truth mm -hmm. as to what is wrong or what is right. What is right. Mm -hmm. If you come from a Christian background, mm -hmm. you believe that what the Bible says is right or wrong is what is the absolute truth that is yes. the standard. So if the kids grow up in the Christian culture, they don't have, they are not supposed to have that problem because in the Christian culture there's a clarity, there's clarity. We know what is right and what is wrong. wrong. We all go to the Bible as a standard. The problem is when they deviate from the Bible. When they deviate from the Bible, then uh, they are exposed to things like, you know, peer pressure, um, you know, sexuality, the, the and others. Absolutely, and all these things, you know. But when you go to the Bible, the Bible has answers, clear answers, mm -hmm. as to what is right and what is, what is wrong. Okay. So. so, what if a kid grew up in a home, not a Christian home, maybe if growing up in a Christian home, you are taught certain things from the Bible, just like you said, but this kid didn't have the opportunity for the parents or people that the guardians to teach them what they should know about the Bible or the Quran or whatever. How then versus that child versus the kid that grew up in a home that had the biblical things, standards to, gr to groom them. So now, morally, that kid from that other non-Christian or non-religious home doesn't really think maybe stealing, it's bad. Maybe they, they might use the term taking, yes. which is still wrong. Yes, I think that there is some basic morality mm -hmm. that is within every human being. Every society. You know, I, I call it the universal morality. The universal morality is in, in the sense that it's inbuilt in every human being and it works according to our conscience. You don't need any education. It is something that we have come to expect from each other. You see, the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. So that, that st standard, I believe, is something in, inborn, it's inbuilt in all human beings. So at that basic level, if you take, for example, the Ten Commandments, if you look at the last six of the Ten Commandments, I believe that it relates to that universal moral law. That is within everybody, no matter your religion. Okay. You know that 
hitting your friend is wrong because they will feel the pain. You, you know they will feel the pain because if somebody hits you, you will feel the you pain. You feel it, yes. So, the, you know, there's basic morality, you know, that is within communities. Okay. So that is not uh, dependent on religion. Okay. Know. Okay. So somebody coming from an atheist background, background will have the same sense of morality. Okay. It's something that we expect from each other, the kind of behavior that we expect from each other. We expect. So there's a difference. Okay. When you're expecting something from some, from an individual, you're hoping to get it, and you'll be disappointed if it's not delivered as you had wanted it. And are we, as this generation, as adults, are we instilling morals into our kids? I, I think we, we, we are. Okay. Uh, so, and I'm, I'm saying that based on the fact that, you know, in the various homes, mm -hmm. you would have what the parents expect as the right behavior mm -hmm. and what is the wrong behavior. As to whether it meets the moral standards of religion is another thing. Uh, for example, if you take the laws of a country, okay, uh, I'm taking it from the home to the general society. Okay. So if you take the laws of a country, for example, the law allows certain behavior okay. as the right behaviors. But if you subject those behaviors by the moral standards of a religion, for example, uh, they become unacceptable. Okay. So, for example, the complex question of abortion, mm -hmm. you know, in t today's world, yes. the complex question of homosexuality, mm -hmm. the complex question of human cloning, question of transhumanism, mm -hmm. uh, these are very difficult moral questions that are facing mm -hmm. society mm -hmm. right now. The question is, the, the point is, the law allows you to be homosexual, or the law allows you to be, uh, uh, to, to do abortion. But we will not stand when you bring it to the context of morality. a religious uh -huh. moral standard. And I believe that we as Christians have the highest standard of morality than the world. Uh -huh. So there are a lot of things that the, the world would consider to be right, because the laws allow, allow it, permits it. Or those are allowed in their homes. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the parents allow the kids to mm -hmm. do certain things. Mm -hmm. But when you subject them to the moral standard of religion, for example, of Christianity, uh, they may be found wanting. Wanting. Okay. So that was from the standpoint of a parent. How are the kids responding to the morals parents and trying to instill in them? Yeah, so the, the kid will learn from the parents. Of so course. he's just not speaking. Yes, the, the, the kids will learn from the, the parents. parents. Okay. The question is whether what the parents are teaching the kid is acceptable in the, in the world outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when the, right, the, the kids grow up, mm -hmm. you know, when the kids begin to interact with the rest of the world, they take those teachings from their parents to the rest of the world. The question is whether or not those will be acceptable. And um, in most cases, we try to use business ethics and laws and those to judge whether one has been equipped with the right set of moral principle. Mm -hmm. uh, but coming back again to mm -hmm. the standards set by religion, mm -hmm. it may be we have the right set of moral principles in the eyes of the world but when you come to Christianity which we are trying to uh, put in the hearts and the minds of our children mm -hmm. the question is will those principles start? stand mm -hmm. so another question kids are not only listening to or the youth are not only listening to what the parents are teaching them they are watching. Yeah. So now it falls on the parents to just make or teach the right morals to the kids, right or wrong, sir. Am I right on that? Yes, you are right. Okay. So parents is a charge to us. You can speak all the angelic or 
or the wisdom you might want to tell your kids, you might the morals you would want to instill in them. But as long as you're not living it, the kids are not learning it. Yes, absolutely. So please, let's keep that at the back of our minds to teach and live a life that we want our kids to emulate. So the next question. For the youth, they think it's so hard when mostly African parents tell us what to do while they're not doing the same thing. And then with the cultural balance and some transitions for a kid that grew up in Ghana and then now in the diaspora, we tend to say, I'm and so and I say, oh, you don't know what we go through out there. Mm-hmm. It's like you're colloquial, or they're fear, and uh, this is, uh, it's not like that outside. San and Kwana, they think. So for a kid like that, and I officially say, okay, this is America. I'm in a diaspora. This is Europe. You cannot, okay. Some people mistake discipline for abuse okay. so they think oh you can't you can't whoop me and i said oh but me and my friend i want and the kids take advantage of that and then whatever that has been instilled in them they do not practice it just because the loss and i said there's other things that they know say parents will get into trouble for if they should cross that line and to know what advice do you have for the youth Yes, uh, I'll, I'll tell the youth that even though society is progressive, there's advancement in technology and everything. Uh, there's exposure to more information, yes. more no- knowledge. They are exposed to a lot of different sets of values. Uh, the, the one of the main problems that the youth Faces today, faces today is that they have encountered too many definitions of morality. Morality. You know, so, but what I would, I would tell them is that true morality, which I believe is what we have in the Bible, um, does not change. That set of principles does not change. The standard. Because God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. end. God is a God that knows the end from the beginning. So when he established his laws and his moral principles, he knew the end, how things are. So those moral principles are solid foundation, Mm -hmm. you know. And everybody is supposed to be able to build some boundaries around their lives. If you want to achieve anything in life, you have to build some boundaries around your life. You have the right to do so many things, but it's not wise to do everything. You have to choose the parameters, the, the boundaries that guide your life. And I believe that the Bible will be the best guide. It will be the highest standard to follow. Uh, it's very difficult, like you said, most people will advocate what the Bible says, but when it comes to doing it, practice they have it. some difficulty. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, our children should take up that challenge, you know, mm-hmm. and try to be good examples themselves, you know, to be the light of the world, as the Bible says. Okay. Thank you for the answer. So that was for the, ki- for the youth. Yeah. Now we're going to the parents. They tend to impose certain things on the youth that's at that point that's when the youth get rebellious because yeah. they are trying to find their identity as well mm-hmm. and then here you are preaching morality mm-hmm. and just like you had mentioned it doesn't change it's standard but then they have their own mind too what you may it might seem to you say it's wrong you know? they might think ah not that big of a deal it's, you know, for parents, that thing said, okay, I'm telling you this is the right way to go. And then they had a rebellious kid. How does the parents go about it? Yes, I, th- I think in this environment, or in this age, yes. children don't want to take 
just an instruction. They want to know why that instruction. Yes. They want to understand the, the consequences if they don't follow that instruction. Yes. So I think that the parents need patience mm -hmm. you know, to explain to their children the, why they are telling them to do, uh, to behave in a certain way. Mm -hmm. you know, because you should use their own experiences to explain to the children that if they go this path, this is where they are going to end. end. You know, instead of you know, shouting and giving them instructions and say, do this like in a dictatorship type of environment. Because in this environment of democracy, the children are taught to uh, be as spoken, as spoken, to express yes. themselves. Yes, freely. Ex exactly, yeah. you know, and um, uh, to, to be independent in their thinking. So we, we, we are faced with that ch challenge, and I think we have to learn, mm -hmm. you know, how We, to, as in the parents. Yeah, as the parents, especially yes. the parents from Africa. Yes. We have to learn mm -hmm. how to deal with the children here. Mm -hmm. That, you know, the, the children, you have to sit them down, yeah. and you have to reason with them okay. instead of giving them just instructions. Okay. Thank you for that answer. So reasoning with them, does that mean you have to be friends with your kids? Uh, to some level, yes. Okay. So if I may ask, what is that some level that you had mentioned? Uh, well, if you want to be in the world of your children, okay. um, it's not about maybe playing games with them okay. or having a real sort of parties. conversation with them. But you have to show care. Okay. You have to show some, some care mm -hmm. as to what, what goes on in their life. What friends do they have? What are they learning in school? what is influencing them. Uh, if you see them behaving a certain way, you need to understand why they have been behaving that, behaving way. that way. Maybe it might be something they have been taught in school. Uh, my kids come home okay. and they tell me how they will be, uh, they will tell me they were taught uh, something I cannot even say on TV say. Mm -hmm. yes, in school. And I'm shocked because I, I was in my 40s probably before I got to know, to know his face. So it's a different kind of environment. You, you will have to really put yourself in their world. You have to, be, you have to engage them yeah. and uh, try to learn from them as well. There's a lot of things we can also learn from them. You know, so. I'll pick on that. Thank you. You have to learn from them as well. And having to make friends with your kids in a, doesn't mean it's just to play video games and ask them whatever they want to do. No, you do it with them. That means that. But you have to understand the kids. You have to engage them. Yes. And one other thing, parents too can learn and should learn from their kids. Absolutely. Because it's a whole new environment. How the parents grew up. It's not how the kids are growing up now. So please, please, please pay attention. And I hope you're taking notes. This is Obra, Obra Life. Life, Abrabomo is um, morality, how to build the youth up. And then, uh, you know, they are finding their ways from different angles and different directions. And now, Kwano, what you want to open so that you better say by Jim Breno, that's not how the kid they're not growing up. And more importantly, in the diaspora, no, believe me, they don't think like you do. And to you know, making friends with the kids. And we all grew up together. And see, I was no. Sir, I cannot rebel I know, sir, and go for work of fire neighbor, and I said, we call when the banner was say. Now, I cannot do preteens, and I said, baby, that's when they try to find who they are in the society. Parents do not understand the kids sometimes. So, parents might think the best way I can just help cub, and I said, to grow to be a better person morally you know, it's just to send them to our home where we call home do you think it's the right thing to do in your own opinion um, the question is do, do such kids come back better do they I come hope, back better I hope someone can answer that for me um, if in some cases they do in some they, they don't don't they come out back yes, worse? But, but I think what pa parents should learn is that yes. sometimes the change must come from us and not the kids. Okay. You know, that's very important. 
the change in behavior. We are trying to change the behavior of our kids. But sometimes the behavior change has to come from, from us. You know. Uh, and that's what I said, that we need to understand their world. You know, the, the, they're growing up in a different world. If they find it difficult to understand you, uh, to understand you in your requirements concerning behavior, <coughs> if they find that what, what you tell them is not consistent with the environment they live in, they, they think that you really don't understand this environment. So it's, um, it takes some effort. We need to understand the environment and we need to understand the case. And when we do, it will require us to have <coughs> some changes in our own behavior in the way we deal with the case. You know, uh, in Ghana, for example, when I was growing up, your dad would, or your mom would say, hey, go and bring this to me. Go and bring that to me. Go and bring that to me. Bring me this. And sometimes you have something very... Close, close to one. Yourself, well, come and give me <laughs> but here, the kid will ask, you, why can't, why you, can't you get it yourself? yourself? <laughs> because they are brought up to do things on their own, to be independent. Yes. You know, so they, 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 they think you should be the same. Yes. That's the problem. So there are a lot of things we can learn from them and until we can understand their world, the yeah. environment they are growing up in, uh, we, it will be very difficult for us to relate to, to, to mold them. Okay. Very difficult. So. Okay. So, thank you. On that note, is it right to give your kids, people use the term allowance, people use it as bribe, people use the term payment, to have your kid ha have a certain responsibility in the home, like washing dishes, taking out trash, morally, is it acceptable and I say, is it okay to pay them give them monetary you know reward reward they say do this i will pay you and the kids know say if i wash dishes i'm getting paid five dollars is that the right thing to do well it 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 depends on whether those behaviors will stay without the money so if i have five dollars today i give it to my daughter and I ask her to do something for me. If I don't have the five dollars tomorrow. tomorrow, and she refuses to do it, then it's a bad, uh, it's a, it's a it's a bad practice be behavior. It's a very bad practice. But it's know. it's happening in our homes. Yeah, it is it's happening. Not, kids, I give my my kids my three kids mm -hmm. hundred dollars each mm -hmm. to learn some ninety one. Okay. Okay. So they all quickly went to the Bible, mm -hmm. tried to memorize some 91 because they wanted $100. Yeah. And at some point they said, oh, we are, we are doing it, so give us the money. And I give the money to them. But today, if you ask them to recite some 91, they can't. Not they cannot. Them. So I usually will tell them, you will give back my money. I will take the money back from you guys. You know, but um, so I, it doesn't really work. It does not That's work. That's what I'm saying. Okay. okay. So it's not the best practice. It's not the, you have to put in them a sense of moral responsibility. Yes. Because as they, they grow up, you know, uh, you have to let them know that they have a lot of responsibility. Yes. Because the way society is, the way society is structured, uh, society needs moral people yes. to make it function. We have um, the rich, we have the poor, we have the middle weak, class. We have the strong, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we have the slave. We have the free. Yeah. And who is going to help the, the weak? Who is going to help the poor? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, these are social responsibilities and moral responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So in this world, we have uh, philanthropists, yes. and we have people like that who, you know, have the mindset of helping people. We need more people like that. You have to train your children. Okay. You have to let them know what the moral responsibilities are ahead of them. You know, so. Thank you. So with training them now is what you practice that will have the kids do that. Awesome. So now you're telling your kids, wash the dishes, I'll give you money. That's not the right thing. Take out the trash, I'm going to give you money. So the kid, in their sense, in their minds, they think and say, oh, okay, they'll do it because I need $5. 
Yes. I, I need money. It's in a, I know that, I know mom now demotivating crana, but that's not a good thing. Yes, sir. I hope you guys are paying attention and taking notes on morality. And tell you, did you make any ever by every yet? Nah, yeah, to us, no. Say, you're born in Tofa, you're queer, Nimka, Kaya Church, and Nimemo. Sam Reno, morality is not just in the home. What role does the community and does our society play in morally, mor moral upbringing of the youth? What role does the community or the society play in the moral upbringing of the youth? Okay, so uh, we have the educational system. Yes. We have the religious organization. Um, where the kids are learning from. And I think that in school, they are thought to be heroes. Okay. The heroes making difference in people's lives. Yeah. You know, they, they are thought um, to be ethical in the workplace. You know, they are made to understand that once you enter the workplace, if you don't have a good behavior, you know, uh, you are going to have problems in the work environment. Mm -hmm. So, but I think it goes beyond that. You know. Okay. Uh, society needs love, society needs peace, you know, um, society needs joy, uh, society needs goodness. Mm -hmm. Harmony, uh, unity. And all these are in a way connected with morality, okay. you know. So I think uh, we as parents have the greater responsibility than everybody, everyone else. We have to teach our children to love. We have to teach our children to be peaceful, mm -hmm. uh, to be peaceful, and um, live by the golden standard of love your neighbor as yourself. Like yourself. Because if we are all moral, nobody will steal from the other. No one is going to kill uh, an innocent person, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So if we are all moral, Society is going to have the peace that we are craving for. We are going to have the love that we crave for in the sense that people have a sense of moral responsibility towards one, and one another. So, yeah. Okay, so the responsibility falls on each one of us. You have a societal role to play in grooming the youth morally. So the kids go outside whatever they see they practice whatever they hear it does have it takes a toll like tolls on their lives so please yeah secretly no they admire you so much say they don't even pay attention as they don't listen to their parents as much as they adore you that they look up to you. And in the union, and we have roles to play in a society. Yo, Mr. Kunadu, and Chanea, the Jumadian Baby, Mr. In your own words, and give us your final words to our cherished viewers and listeners. So, in the world we live in today, you know, there cannot be peace without morality. You know, the prisons will fill up without morality. Many innocent people can lose their lives without morality. There will be no security without morality. Morality is so fundamental to our peaceful coexistence and the progress of society. So what I will tell the youth is that they should take up the challenge as the champions of morality. Mm -hmm. And like you said, by example, they should live by example and I, I will recommend the standard of the Bible mm -hmm. of all the moral systems mm -hmm. I, will rec rec I will recommend the standards in the Bible the, the standards in the Bible are very high uh, so for example the Bible even talks about morality in the way we think but ethics do not laws do not you know they all focus on your actions uh, what you think is a moral standard in the Bible so the Bible is very comprehensive and has a, a higher moral standard than every other system that I know of. 
So I recommend the Bible. They, once they go by the Bible, they, I believe that they will be the light of the world that the Bible talks about. Absolutely. And they will be the salt of the world. They will shine and make a difference in society. In society. Thank you. But with the Yang channel, a question came and from Ebenezer and Jay Ghana is there. I said, what can we blend both our cultures together in terms of morality? Like I said, if we have one standard for morality, you see, the problem is where we have different standards. Diverse. We have different definitions. Mm -hmm. of we have different values. Uh, the, the Bible, for example, is a standard where we can all go to. If we have one set of principles and one of set of definitions, and one set of uh, boundaries, mm -hmm. then it will not be difficult. Th those differences will, will, will not arise. I know that in this society, there are very difficult moral questions. Yes. Because people do not have one standard, you know. So when you take the question of abortion, for example, then the scientific community will say, oh, uh, a baby unborn is not life. It's not life. You understand? But if you go mm -hmm. to the Bible, you know that it's different. Yes. You know? So once we have differences in moral standards, then it will be very difficult to reconcile to and reconcile. agree. Yes. So the, the world should move towards one moral set of standards. And the world is trying to do that as we speak. Mm -hmm. The world is trying to create universal ethical values. But we, coming from the Christian background, mm -hmm. have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Because the values of the world, the ethics of the world, uh, do, do not agree with our moral standard, which is the Bible. So people should watch for, mm -hmm. you know. Um, how, like I said, I, I recommend that we as parents mm -hmm. should reconcile the differences between our culture and our values with our children by making making reference to one standard, which is the Bible. Okay. Thank you for that answer. Uh, another question just came. I'll just read it. We do have different beliefs, so I guess we have kind of answered that, but we do have different beliefs, so how can we relate to the Bible as the stand of morality? Yes, that is a very good question. I know when you go to the Bible, mm -hmm. uh, there's, you know, it's, people will say it's subject to interpretation. Yes. So you're going to have different sets of interpretations. interpretations. The good thing is that when you go to a religious organization, yes. like the Seven Day Advent Adventist, mm -hmm. or you go to the Presbyterian, Church, you, you don't have that much difference. Okay. Because they are all bound by a certain set of interpretations of the Bible. Okay. And the, the problem arises when you move from one organization to so another. Uh, those are bigger problems in the sense that not only on the question of morality, but on so many other things. It, it is very difficult to reconcile. But my, my advice is that in this world, you can't believe in everything. Okay. So you have to believe in something. In something. So as, as a family, if we all belong to one organization, mm -hmm. we should believe in what the organization says okay. and live by the moral principles of the organization, the interpretations that the organization, the organization has. gives. Okay, thank you. And I guess the year up in the upper, I don't know, Mr. Kunadi, for honoring our invitation. And as you had mentioned earlier, no, this is not the first and last time you're going to be seeing Mr. Kunadi in our studio. A2 TV. Yeah, the Obra Abramo. Life. Life moon semi, the moon is a bit brave. And the morality account one semi. And yeah, no, no. And yeah, youth no so home come on, couldn't you bet you chain? And then for and some got youth in cross here, four months and so cross the doors. And the youth are warring ten. And then, yeah, is it right? And I said wrong. You can with me morally, no. With me, go catch your business, warring ten. Because I believe it says, Sebi uh, Obani, and who to be done, not be man to be done, and that's a full blown adulter who to be making decisions morally. Sebi, say, I'm a person, I'm a woman to me, and she. And think, come on, you should be brave. 
any of the bebremo. And see, I'm a boy. Mon check your page in out, Mr. Mo. Like, share, comment. Maybe be a bit in so after you. I will YouTube on so A2 TV. Yeah, they a brabo moon some stories and so by the same be so by by be say be say mo yes sir mo mo so yes ne ni ni mo ni jume ni ni se bo banya a de fufu a de fufu each day you learn something and you give something as well so we are say ebe koswa a ye minu mi you know we can't expect anybody coming from Mars to make the Earth better for us ain't you know Mr. Kuredi Mr. Me ba oba kama me me share that para me dete. So a chain now be kono me person ma wadofo any ashe for shout out. Obi a person with Chani Biana. Ndam A two TV. If you dey use no Papa koma yen. I want to say hello to my wife Cecilia and to my mother-in-law Cecilia and then to my three children Patrick, Janice, and Dana. And Dana, that's beautiful. Na. Thank you very much. I hope they are watching, and if not, they can watch later. Cause I we can get pretty busy, and I know that for a fact. So Nyame Boa, we communicate with you. We are here to stay. A2 TV. Obra, and your brown coni and the bread bread. Your segments we bring. Me pa check it out. Ewo YouTube, any Facebook, any other social media handles that we communicate with you guys. Mr. Obra Munsem, Obra Eyo Kon. Obra, eko entokwa entokwa nyesi umo biyano abuni blue, eh yadi na ena ena ejine se mesro se nyame bwana obra besa badi ni se di saga ne bayo yo pesa oyo obra bobiano morally no muse eso nyame ni morally june se adi ami yebe habi niya ni ni oyo muse saga la enkwa di ni 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 se wa se bibia ono. Thank you very much. And Thanks hope for me. hope to see you pretty soon. Na and Kayana at Wasson or Son, Yadi at Wasso. Execution entertainment. Happy Sabbath, so that's why I'm just so hundred times in a week. Now me and Cheryl be an uncomfortable. Eight to ten minutes a day. Eight to ten. That's it. Now me and Kamu. Bye bye. So